Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Genki One Lesson 6 live stream. It's good to see everyone here. Let's go ahead and see who is in chat tonight. We've got with us participants Sophia's Animation Studio, good evening, and Carpe Diem, Simpy 101, Come to Japan Dam, my trusty mod, Amacro, Kevin Abroad, Meng Fukong, Mind Sums, I can never read your name, Mind Gaming, Patrick, C. Anthonym, The Gastro Traveler, Tobin Kaysner, y Yuki. She's also right here. And Stadi Bisu. And I think there's more people too, but that's just the people who are showing up in chat. So it's good to see you guys tonight. Um, tonight we're going to be covering the T form and different ways to use it. And it's a pretty straightforward lesson, I think. It's a little bit difficult, but it's super useful. You're going to be using the T form constantly from this point on. And. There's also some other good news that's going to come up along with the tape form, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, let's go ahead and check in chat. Oh, good evening, Diglets, Radclaw, is it's Ink, and Nihondo, Nihongo don't pass, ah, Nihon do not pass go. Someone desperately needing coffee. Me too. Except it's 9 p.m. here, so, oh well. Samzu up, wo, kogeki shite. Right on. Hi, Dan. So, just want to say thank you to my patrons. We just hit a hundred patrons at Tokini Andy the other day. I think we're at like 103 now, so thank you so much to all of you guys for uh, supporting this channel. Uh, some people are asking about Yuki quitting her job. We said that she was going to start the process of quitting when we hit a hundred patrons so that she can work on her own business and helping me out with Tokini Andy as well and eventually working on I Talk I. And uh, yeah, she's got to write out her Nandake,それ,あの,退職願い means uh, asking, it's like a paper that you, it's an official paper you have to write, and it, 退職願い means quitting permission, or basically, but you, you have to like ask permission to quit, but obviously it's just, it's saying I'm quitting. But anyway, so that's, that's kind of exciting. Uh, I've got at least a year left in me, because, you know, just to be safe, at least a year, maybe two, we'll see, working at my current job, because my current job's not that bad, but anyway. <sighs> it's good to see you guys. Thank you for being here. And why don't we go ahead and jump into lesson six, the Tay form. So today we're going to be covering, uh, let me turn this off really quick. Today we're going to be covering the Tay form, polite requests using the Tay form, sequence of events also using the Tay form, you may or may I also using the Tay form, prohibition. Uh, that's also using the Tay form, explaining reasons, which does not use the Tay form, and offering assistance, which is using something we actually already learned. So, yeah, that's a lot of the Tay form. So, the first part is going to be going with the Tay form, which is going to be basically, you know, the most difficult part of the lesson, I guess. It's the part that has the most memorization involved, but when we get that down, the rest of the lesson is going to be actually really straightforward. There's actually, besides the example sentences, only like one explanation slide per per section after the tape form so that's pretty exciting so let's just go ahead and jump into it so before we can get started with the tape form we have to do a little bit of review so you'll remember that all verbs in japanese end with an u syllable in their dictionary form and by that i mean they end in the character u ku su tsu nu mu gu bu or du all verbs, right? If it ends in one of those characters, it's probably a verb. Now, I always recommend that you learn verbs in their dictionary form because that makes most conjugations much, much more straightforward, and the Tay form is no exception. So, in Genki, they present you with two different types of verbs, do verbs and u verbs. Now, I hate those, I really hate those explanations because even in Japan, for Japanese students, when they're in school, they teach this. Godan verbs, which which I'm gonna make another video explaining why they're called go as in five Godan verbs, five step verbs. But we're not gonna go over that tonight. Just know that there's Godan verbs and there's Ichidan, single step verbs. And I'll explain what they are a little bit as we go along. But basically, Godan verbs are any verb that ends in u, tsu, ru, mu, nu, bu, su, ku, or gu. And there's a little star here because some verbs that end in do are actually ichidan verbs, but all the rest, they're always godan verbs. So that's that's pretty straightforward, right? 
So with the mas form and with the past tense of like the polite conjugations, right? There was just a basic little simple rule you could learn to learn how to conjugate into the into the mas form, right? Super straightforward. All you had to know was that you change the u to an e and the tsu to a chi uh, and stuff like that, right? Well, there's no like hard and fast rule for the te form. Unfortunately, there's just three or actually four different endings that you have to just memorize. But the good news is, is that depending on the ending of a verb in its dictionary form, it's always going to be the same, except for do. <laughs> always except for do. So let's just go over them really quick. Luckily, they're, they're sort of grouped. There's only one, two, three. There's four groups with a little special one right here. But basically, u, tsu, and du are going to end in a small tsu plus a te. So a te, right? That small tsu is like a little pause. They end in... Okay, you cut that last character, u, tsu, or du, and add this. And that's the conjugation for the te form. And I'll explain what the te form does in a little bit, right? Mu, nu, and bu, they all conjugate into nde, nde. <clears throat> su, you cut the su and add shite. For ku, you cut the ku and it becomes ite. And for gu, you cut the gu and it becomes ide. Okay? So you just have to kind of memorize those. There's no like special, there's no special rule for it. Let me just turn those down. It's just unfortunate you have to memorize them. U, tsu, du becomes small tsu plus te, except for iru, eru verbs, which are ichi dem verbs. We'll go over those in a little bit. And mu, nu, bu. I mean, if you think of mu and nu, that sort of mu, nu sound, and you correlate it with this n, de, it's sort of easier to remember that way. And then bu becomes nde, su becomes shite, right? It's just an alteration of su becomes shi. And then ku and gu, it's sort of weird how they become ite and ide. There's no wonderful way to remember them. Unless you want to use something like this, maybe. This, this might be useful for you. Oh, where'd it go? Come on. Let's get you down here. This is actually from... The, I think it's from the Genki lesson. I'm not really sure, but let's go ahead and listen to this. This might help you remember it. Uh, go. So um, something like that might be useful to remember. I don't know. You could always watch that. <laughs> Maybe that could help you remember these conjugations if you're having trouble with them. I personally just memorized them myself this way, and it worked out. But some examples will probably help you memorize them a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that. And by the way, I'm actually going to record a... Uh, a version of that song one of these days on guitar or something because I can play the song on guitar. I just have to sing it that way and maybe, maybe Ando Sam will sing it or something. That could be fun. We got to try that someday. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little song. That's one way you could memorize the te form conjugations. Now, the te form is generally, it's like a request. So if you just use the te form on its own, for example, u becomes small tsu te, right? So u tau becomes utatte. Now, utatte on its own is a polite request. It's not polite, but it's a request. It's not a command, it's just a request. So it's it basically saying, hey, sing. Utatte, for example, on the last song, uite na da da da, something like that. And du, noru, becomes notte, get on. Tsu becomes motsu, becomes motte which is wait, please wait, matte, not motte, matte, sorry, I read that wrong. For some reason, oh, the gonna there it is, okay. Matte, 
it means wait, wait, wait. You've probably heard in anime or something. Chotto matte. That means just wait a minute. Wait a second. Chotto matte. That's using the te form, right? Kite means listen, listen. It's it's not commanding someone to listen. It's asking them. It's requesting that they listen to you. Isoide means hurry, hurry, hurry. So I put these together. Utsu, utsu. Because they end in the same way, and these ones are, are similar. Ku becomes ite, and gu becomes ide, right? So hurry, isoide! Nomu and asobu and shinu both, you change the endings to nde. So nomu becomes nonde, drink it, drink it. Asonde, play, play, come on, play. Shinde, that means die, I guess. And hanashite means speak. And that's it. So, after you memorize those endings, I've got some really good news for you. And that good news is you already know now how to make the informal past tense. Because the informal past tense, verbs are conjugated exactly the same way as the te form, except it doesn't end in te or de, it ends in ta or da. So if we went back here and we were to change these into their informal past tense, it would be Utatta, sang. Notta, got on. Matta, I waited. Hmm, that's a weird one. Kita, listened. Isoida, hurried. Continuing on. Nonda, asonda. Shinda, hanashita. So it's exactly the same. The, the past informal tense and the te form, they're the same. Just the last character is changed. So if you can memorize, sorry, if you can memorize the te form, you know the past tense as well. So that's pretty straightforward, pretty cool. I, I was pretty happy about that when I realized when I was studying. So hopefully you can make some use of that. Now the bad news is that, just like all the other verb conjugations, there are ichidam verbs. So ichidam verbs are verbs that end in iru or edu, and by that I mean if you write out a verb in romaji, like taberu, you get ta be ru, and you'll notice that the last character there is an e followed by ru. So that's an edu verb, which means that it's most likely an ichidam verb, except for a couple exceptions that I'll show you down below. And they're, they're exceptions for all the other conjugations we've covered so far as well. So if you've already got them memorized for those, you'll know that they're an exception for this one as well. So that's not too bad. So just like with the other ichidam verbs, it's actually super easy to make the te form with them. All you got to do is cut the ru and add te. So some examples are mite, nete, okite, wake up, get up, nete is sleep, and mite is look. And remember, those are requests. If we were to do the past tense of those, it would just be mita, I looked, neta, I slept, okita, I woke up, or I got up. If you've watched the original Lesson 6 video, you'll know that I covered the te form and the past tense together. I'm not doing that explicitly here because I'm going to have to do it again anyway in Lesson, I think it's 8 or something. But I just, I do want to mention it because you can already use it now. So the same exceptions that there are for the other conjugations are exceptions for the te form as well. So, hairu, hashiru, iru. Kairu, kagiru, kiru, shaberu, shiru, keru, suberu. They all sound like they would be iru and or that they would be iru and edu verbs, but they're not. Someone mentioned to me that they, the iru and edu part are all part of the kanji, and at first I thought that was that made sense, but that doesn't make really any sense because miru and neru also have the e and e as part of the kanji, so. so doesn't really work that way. But anyway, you would conjugate these the same as a regular godan verb. So it would be haitte, hashitte, itte. You would never say this for need. But anyway, kaite, kagitte, kitte, shabette, shitte, kette, and subette. Right? So they're all conjugated the same way as a normal godan do verb. So that's that's pretty much it, except that there are the same irregulars as well, plus one more. So the irregular verbs for the mas uh, conjugation and for the mashita conjugation were kuru and suru, right? Those are always irregular for most conjugations. So kuru becomes kite, suru becomes shite. And there's one more, which is 
Iku. Iku for the te form and the past, uh, the informal past tense is irregular. So if you see it ends in ku, you would think it would be ite with two e sounds, right? But it's not. It's a small tsu and a te for iku. So iku becomes itte. So just be aware of that. You have to memorize that for the te form and the past tense. And that's it. There's there's no special things you have. You just have to memorize those four endings, basically, or the five endings, I guess. And you've got the te form down. But let's go over, go ahead and do some examples and jump into a dialogue. And then I will get to your questions in a few minutes. So our first examples are denki wo tsukete. Turn the light on. Denki o tsukete. Tsukete means to turn on. I think that was one of the vocabulary words in Genki Lesson 6. Party ni kite. Come to the party. This is a request, remember, not a command. Party ni kite. You gohan wo tsukute. This, this is kind of rude. You wouldn't really want to say to someone, you gohan wo tsukute. You could, you could add what is our next, our next part. The next section is kudasai, which would be please, please make dinner would be you gohan wo tsukute kudasai, which is, which is polite. Um, we're covering that in the next section. So if you want to learn more about that, stick around till then. This is of course cooked dinner. It's a request to cook dinner. Some longer, more difficult sentences we can go over are isu no ue no taoru wo totte. Take the towel on the chair or get the towel from off off the chair, I guess from on top of the chair. So isu no ue no taoru wo totte. I guess another like a literal translation for this would be get the towel that's on the chair would be sort of a more literal translation of this. Our next sentence is utatte ud odotte utatte odotte sing and dance. Jibun no nomimono wo motte kite bring your own drink. Tomodachi mo tsurette kite ne bring your friends too. Now, <clears throat> I just want to mention one thing. If you guys have gone over the vocabulary in well, either on the Patreon videos. If it's on the Patreon videos, you already know about this. If you've gone over the vocabulary on your own in the textbook, then you'll know that Genki presents these two verbs, motte kuru and tsurete kuru, as irregular verbs. And that's just, that's just wrong. It's plain wrong. I don't know why Genki does it. I don't know why Genki does a lot of things sometimes, but I definitely have no idea why they, pre why they present motte kuru, tsurete kuru, and denwa suru as irregular verbs because that's just insane. They're not in regular irregular verbs. Motte kuru and surete kuru are they're, they're grammar points. It's a grammar point. Motte is motsu, right? To carry or to bring. And tsurete is uh tsureru, tsure, tsureru, which is to bring something somewhere. And when you use the te form and the verb kuru, which is to come. It means to bring something, right? Or to come and do something, or to do something and come over here, right? It's a grammar point that's not in Genki 2, or in Genki 1, which is probably why they presented it this way, but I don't know why they lied about it. It's just, it's another grammar point, te kuru. And in this case, motte kuru means bring. And tsurete kuru also means bring, but bring a person, whereas motte kuru is bring a thing. And denwa suru, it's just denwa, which is telephone, and suru, which is the verb to do. So it's just like a normal, like benkyo suru. It's the same exact idea, like a be verb, an is verb. I don't know why they presented it that way. That sort of rubbed me the wrong way, but it is what it is. <laughs> Let's keep going. Today, we are doing a continuation of the dialogue last week, which is where Mr. A went on a date with Miss B, or maybe it was the other way around. I have no idea, but it's a continuation of that. So let's go ahead and see what happened. First, I'll read it slowly. And then at full speed, then we'll go over the meaning, and I will get to your questions immediately after that. So, suatte, suatte, a, arigato, oshiete, e, nani ga, b san to no deto da yo, nani? Right, full speed. Suatte, suatte, a, arigato, oshiete, e, nani ga? B san to no deto da yo. Nani? All right, let's see what that means. Suatte, suatte means sit, sit, or sit down, sit down. Maybe there's a chair in the room. Ah, arigato. I think everyone understands that one. It just means, oh, thanks. 
oshiete. This means tell me. It can also mean teach me. So if you were to ask your teacher to teach you something, you, you wanted them to teach you something special. I don't know. You want them to teach you judo or something or taekwondo. I don't know. You would say oshiete, oshiete, sore, that thing, right? In this case, it can also be used to mean tell me. Tell me something that I want to know that I don't know. Oshiete, e, nani ga, huh? Tell you what? So in this sentence, uh, I just want you to know that this, the, uh, the dialogue in this, in this lesson is a bit casual. I'm doing a lot of dropping just to make it sort of a more natural conversation. So in this case, we're dropping a part of the sentence. Eh, nani ga, nani ga oshiete hoshi would be the full sentence. We're not going to learn te hoshi tonight, but basically that's what we're dropping. Um, but you can just say nani ga when someone says they want you to do something and you don't know what they're what exactly it is that they want you to do, especially if it's the verb oshiete. You can use nani ga, what do you want me to teach you? What do you want me to tell you? When you don't know what they're asking about. B san to no deto da yo. Your date with B. So this is a little bit confusing. We haven't gone over this grammar and I was a, I was a little conflicted on whether or not I actually wanted to use this, this, uh, this grammar point, but it's not too bad. Let's go over it. Bisan is, of course, bisan to, right? This is the together to, the with to. So what we have dropped there is a san, a san to, b san to, no de to. So this no is the possessive no. So it's like a and b's, right? The possessive s, date. A and b's date. So bisan to no de to da yo. So your date with Bisan. So obviously your here is also the possessive. So that's what that means. It's a little bit confusing and I hope it, it doesn't drive you too far off. If, if it's too confusing, don't worry about it. But basically this is the possessive no and this is the to particle that means with. And we're dropping a son's name. Nani? Just means what? The next section is polite requests in Japanese. So I hope everyone's doing great tonight. I hope that wasn't too confusing. That was a lot of information. But let's go ahead and jump over into the chat and see if we have any questions. Oh, I've got like liquid in my throat. So weird. Anyway, I learned this with the melody from Silver Bells. Ooh, should have sung along to it, Andy. Maybe I'll sing along. I'll sing along with the song at the end of the stream. So if you're still here at the end of the stream, I'll try singing along with it. Could be fun. I'll put in some headphones. I just I couldn't because I don't have headphones plugged into the computer. I couldn't actually listen to the song with you. I had to I had my volume all the way down so that I couldn't hear it. If I put headphones in, I can do that. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. I volunteered to sing, said Kevin. Ooh, we could do a duet. <laughs> that would be so much fun. For it's Santa Claus is coming to town. Nice. I will help you make the song. Ha ha. Te, uh, uta no rinku wo. Ah, you want me to send the link? I will send the link. Uh, let, uh, can I bring up that link? Let me grab the link really quick. Where is my history? History. Whew, it's hot in here. There it is. Let's not get that sending out to everyone. Share. It has 46,000 views and only six dislikes. That's how you know it's a good video. There's the link down in chat. All these are very high frequency words to learn. Yes, this explains all the Japanese movie characters saying wakata. Exactly, exactly. That's the, uh, that's the past tense of understood. All of these are very high frequency words. Great tip, great tip for the informal past tense. Yes. As a beginner learner, is it safer, culturally speaking, to stick with the formal past tense or doesn't it matter as much? Says the gastro traveler. Well, for starters, the formal past tense is easier. So there's that. Like, tabemashita. I mean, I guess it's not easier. Tabeta is easier to say than tabemashita. But there's less things to memorize, right? If you already know the, the formal conjugation rules then you've probably got more experience with them and you'll be better off just using that for now. Um, I started off with informal conjugations personally and I, I didn't encounter any issues with it. Nobody ever gave me any crap because I was using informal conjugations. So it's kind of up to you. You'll get a sense for it over time. If you're using them at work with people who are above you, like your boss or your principal or something like that, if say if you work in Japan, I would stick with the polite past tense, but that's not a hard and fast rule. Um, but generally, yeah, people that are older than you, you should probably use the the more polite tense. 
People who are your friends or are your own age or are younger than you or children, you'll generally use the informal past tense. But once again, it's up to you. For any language, it's better to focus on being formal, I'd say, than to learn informal later, says Kevin Abroad. Yeah, it depends. I, I learned the informal first because, well, for two reasons. It's easier to remember. It's shorter, is what I thought because they're shorter, the con final conjugations are shorter, so it was easier for me to get them out early because it was harder to string together words, especially since I was using textbooks that didn't teach straightforward conjugation, I was trying to memorize the conjugation for every word, so I had to remember things like, um, uh, which was really difficult, it's much more difficult than hashita, right? Hashita, is, which is ran, is way easier to say than hashirimashita when you're starting out learning, right? So that's why I did it that way. But yeah, generally speaking, it's nice to be formal. Uh, that would be like saying, hey, you need this. Yes, kind of like that, which is, I don't know, you'd probably never say that I'm a crow. I feel like, itte, as in, iru, hitsuyo aru no iru. Sono te, te no shikata, ne, tsukawanai yo ne. Especially because Japanese is tricky with formality. What do teachers think? Yeah, um, I agree, Kevin. It can be a little tricky, but. Because we're foreigners, we generally get can get away with some mistakes in our conjugation or being a little more less a little less strict when we're using polite or impolite uh, conjugations. Sounds like a bit bad telemarketer. Uh, I've heard some stories of people traveling to Japan busting out formal language and causing some hilarity by being overly formal with waiters in a restaurant. Ah, yes. So basically, you are always above people who are serving you. So in a, if in a restaurant situation, you're always you're always above on the social ladder above them. In a store in a in a like a convenience store, you're always above. So for example, if you were to pay at the convenience store and then say arigato gozaimashita, that would be a little weird. Like it's a little bit too formal. Generally like in a convenience store when I say thanks for something, I'll just say domo. Domo, which is like a very very sort of brisk, but thanks. A lot of people don't say anything. I just, I like to. I feel a little weird if I don't. But yes, being too formal with like a waiter is, <laughs> it's kind of hysterical, I think, for a lot of people. But it's not, it's not a terrible thing. Uh, but generally learning formal first in vanity, yeah. As an Englishman, I'll just doff my cap and swing my brolly. <laughs> is the tape form like a direct command or like a request? It's a request. So command, there's another form for command. In my original video, I said command, and that was wrong. So I'm sorry about that. Um, it can feel like a command, I feel like, but it's actually a request. So command, a command would be like if you're telling, if you're commanding someone to run, you would say, Hashiro, Hashiro, that's a command, that means run. But Hashite means, is like requesting them to run. Hashire, I'm sorry, Hashire, Hashire, De is the, I'm sorry, thank you. Hashire, De is the, um, is the command. Uh, so, tab. Tabere. Mm? Tabero. Tabero. Ne? There's, a, there's a couple forms. I can't remember all the command forms. I use them so infrequently. But how can you easily tell ta from, uh, you got ta from ta? In the context. Like, you're never going to have the ta katakana alongside a kanji. So that's pretty much how you'll know the difference. <laughs> when in doubt, just use the formal tense. Make it a request with kudasai. Yeah, that's the next part. He'll get, he'll get to that soon. Indeed, I will. But it is a request just with the te. It's just a polite request with kudasai, which we'll cover in a second. One thing with Genki is that all these college students talk like they're working in an office together. Mary and Takeshi would be using informal language with each other. Absolutely. Yes, that is true. But, you know, baby steps. There's only so much you can do with a textbook that's aimed at everybody. Ah, arigato gozaimasu. Does that tono always mean possessive? No. Yeah, pretty much. Yes, I think so. Da at the end is casual des, I presume? Yes. I'm back! I went over this lesson a few days ago and it broke my head. Hopefully I'll understand it today. I hope so too. I hope so too. Hopefully I can make it a little bit more straightforward. Unfortunately, I've already covered it. So if you want to go back and then like use like two times speed to run through everything I just did to catch up, that might help. Uh, isn't the te form also used for the I have been tense like benkyo shite? Uh, I have been is te ita, right? So te, it's the past tense of the te iru form, which is actually the next lesson. So yes, you do use the te form for that, but it's not until the next lesson that we cover that. 
Uh, I'm certainly more comfortable using the formal past tense. Yeah, the person, which is fine. You can feel free to use that. You should make a video about what level of formality is appropriate in every different everyday situ life situations when interacting with staff. That that could be a good idea for a video. There's so many videos I need to make, but hopefully I can start getting to it. I'm starting to get into a bit of a, a rhythm with the Patreon content, but unfortunately that does take up a lot of my time, these streams and the Patreon content, so it's very hard for me to make other videos, but anyway. <sighs> my voice is so weird tonight. Does it sound weird to you guys? Is everything okay? I hope everything's okay. I hope everyone is having a wonderful week and doing okay. I remember saying, Iye kekko this when someone was trying to hand me a leaf. <laughs> yeah. Daijoubu mm, this would probably be, or just, I mm. I would usually say, yeah, daijoubu. Or something like that instead of Iye kekko this. It's super formal. But it's, it's not incorrect. Is there a Japanese word for a furry? I've seen kemono here and there. I have no idea. Furry. Furry. あの、動物みたいに服を着るあとマスクとか着るやつ。ちょっとなんか変な趣味感、変な趣味。うん、違う。ちょっと違う。なんかエッチみたいなことですよ。そうやって服を着てエッチのパーティーしに行くってこと。
教えて教えてもうやめてください。Right, let's go over that at full speed. 教えてくださいデートじゃなかったよえう、ー、嘘,嘘じゃないよ本当に教えて教えてもうやめてください。Alright, let's go ahead and see, and see what that looks like in English. Our first sentence is 教えてください。That means please tell me. Remember, we had 教えて in the last section too, and that was just tell me. This time it's 教えてください which is please tell me. デートじゃなかったよ。It wasn't a date, really. This is じゃなかった which is from our past. I guess that was past tense of じゃない。Did we ever cover that? I can't remember. I think we might have in lesson four. So if you. Yeah, anyway, we did. We covered that in lesson four. So that's the past tense of Janai. It wasn't a date, really. <laughs> eh? Uso. Yeah, right. So, Uso, right? It's a noun that means lie. So this is like, eh? Lies. But I translated it as, yeah, right. That's probably a more accurate in English translation of this sentence. Eh? Uso. Yeah, right. It's sort of a sarcastic, right? Yeah, right. You're lying. Uso. Uso ja nai yo. It's not a lie, really. It was the literal translation. It could, in this context, it would just be seriously. Uso ja nai yo. Is how that would be sort of translated. Honto ni? Honto ni? With a question rising intonation means really? Honto ni? Also means really. Right? But with a rising intonation at the end, it means really? With a question. Oshiete, oshiete, tell me, tell me. Mo. This mo means already. That's what it literally means. So, yamete kudasai. So, yamete means to stop or to quit something. Yamete kudasai. Please quit it already. And that already is mo. Yamete kudasai. Please quit it already. And that's it. Our next sec section is describing a sequence of events using the te form. So does anyone have any questions? Let's go ahead and see what's happening over in chat. Hope that wasn't too confusing. If it was, that's what we stop and have some questions for. What Kevin said. <coughs> yeah, don't burn yourself out, says Radclaw. But eventually I do have to make those videos. There's so many videos I need to make and I need to get back to TikTok. I mean, I've got 82,000 followers on TikTok and I don't make TikToks anymore. That's just insane. What am I thinking? I do have to get back to making regular content one of these days, but I have been, you know, trying to get the sort of groundwork done on the Patreon and stuff. So <laughs> your voice sounds as sexy as ever. Thank you, sir. Flirting with the teacher. <laughs> study this. Asking the real questions up in this. What did study this ask? Ah, is there a furry? Shirabeta. Furry. Yuki is a. Uh, Yuki is searching furry for. Yeah, so this, so this, so this. Furry. Furry fandom is a subculture interested. Yeah. Fadi. Fadi. It's just Fadi. I guess. Fadi. Fandom. 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 Fadi. Fadi. Can you type that in chat? Yuki's going to type in what it is in Japanese for you in chat. So. Yo. She's never seen anything like it, but she looked it up and found what it actually is in Japanese. It's just fadi. Bro, I end school in a week and three days. Nice. Congratulations. What level of formality is appropriate with speaking to you, Andy? Informal. I prefer being spoken to in an informal way. But you can do what you like. Is kudasai normally written with or without kanji? Uh, Wani Kani teaches kudasai. It um, doesn't matter. There's no hard and fast rules. Most people, I'd say, write it with just hiragana. But I have seen it on signs and stuff with the kanji. Um, but it doesn't really matter. There's no hard and fast rule, I don't think, whether or not you use the kanji for kudasai. Hmm? I think hmm. just the kana hmm. is more formal. Or more like, formal? Yeah, more polite, I think. With just kana. Hmm. Hmm? Yuki yeah. said that she thinks that kudasai is more formal and more like polite mm, so with so just hiragana. The, just the kanji is not as polite. Hmm. Hmm. This, Interesting. This kanji... Hmm. Down. More like 
あのあれガブナーって感じ For more people above you ってこと違うあよくわかんない役所的なあ It's that's kind of difficult to use. It's for people who are in like a high position to use more likely, like a like the mayor or whatever might use stuff like that. I guess I don't know. Anyway, yeah, you're usually gonna use hiragana. I hope I'll never have to request someone to take a shower. <laughs> yeah, might. It's. A, I remember in high school there was a guy who he worked in. We had um. I went to a private school. Like us, it it wasn't like one of those private schools. It was sort of a. All the kids from the inner city in New York came out into the countryside to this private school. It was sort of a religious school, and my parents were a part of that religion, so they sent me to this school as well. It was a boarding school, and I didn't board there though. But anyway, this one guy who boarded there, we did, um, you had to pay for it, obviously, so there, you could work it off. You could do like,、um, like after school work study, basically, like you, you can do in college. And one of them was maintenance, so you'd, you'd be、uh, cutting grass and stuff. and he'd, Cut grass and work in maintenance all morning. And then、um, in the afternoon, when he'd come to class, he wouldn't have showered. And man, it was rough. Like the whole classroom was. Whew, it was rough.、Uh, finally, one day, a teacher could, had no choice but to ask him, pull him aside and ask him to go take a shower <laughs> before he came to class because it, was,、so, it was rough. Anyway. Anyway, <laughs> I presume not using kudasai, kudasai is fine with friends. Yeah. Pretty much. I would still use it in certain situations. Like I, would, like I mentioned earlier, I would, never, I would never say to Yuki, you gohan wo tsukute. Like I would never say that. Make dinner. I would add kudasai, definitely. <laughs> you gohan wo tsukute kudasai. Even that, I'd probably not say. I'd probably say something more like, Gohan o tsukuro, which is like,、oh, let's, let's make dinner or something. Ah, tsukute kureru, I might say. Tsukute kureru, which means, will you make dinner for me? <laughs> well, it's a sort of a nice way to say it. But kureru is something we'll go over in a later lesson.、Uh, I understood everything. Yay, getting there. But again, it just depends on how close you are. Yeah. I got all of it too. Nice. I'm glad to hear that. Today I learned get off my back, man, in Japanese. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not okay, get off my back, man. <laughs> Ah, oriro, ne? Oriro. Quite close, I guess. She taught me that the word I taught you a few months ago. I don't want to say it again. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you covered it two lessons ago. Right on. C is so persistent. Haha, <laughs> yes, C is very persistent. Yeah, can C and A cut, cut A some slack? Probably not. Ah,、uh, fa, fa, di. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Domo, TikTok ga wa karanai. You don't have to worry about TikTok. It's rough when, pe- when going to anime conventions, lots of people not taking showers that need to. Is that so? I've never been to an anime convention, but I guess, I guess that doesn't surprise me so much. I don't know why people don't like showers. Showers are freaking awesome. Like, I love showers. But, Japanese people like more baths.、Yeah. Japanese people prefer baths, yes, but they still bathe. And for some reason, most. Nah, never mind. I'm not going to get into that conversation. Um. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into describing a sequence of events. I think all the questions are out of the way. So, describing a sequence of events, not necessarily I did this and then I did this. <laughs> Excuse me, but sort of. I guess it is sort of like that, but anyway. A sequence of events can be described with the te form. So, you end a sentence with the te form and then just connect the second event. Generally, using a comma or something, but obviously, when you're speaking, there's no comma. The second event will end in a regular conjugation, whether it's informal or formal or past tense. It'll depend on whatever it is and what, when you did it. The, when the event happened and the tense of it, also, it'll depend on the second event. So, an example, a very simple example, would be itte, tabemas, go, eat. Or I went, if this is past tense, I went and I ate. Itte, tabemashita, I went and I ate, for example. And that's, that's a sequence of events, right? You have two verbs there. That's, that's one way you can connect longer sentences and make something more complex, which I know is hard in the beginning because Genki doesn't teach you too many connectors like that. And this is one of the first ones that is going to be super useful. So I've only got complex sentences for this section because it's sort of a complex idea, which is pretty straightforward, though. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it. Toshokan ni itte benkyo shimasu. I go to the library and study. So notice we have two sentences here basically, right? It's Toshokan ni iku, go to the library. 
Study. So if you want to connect those together into one single idea, you just make iku go into the te form. And you remember iku would not be ite, even though ku verbs that end in ku are you cut the ku and add ite. Iku is an <clears throat> it's an irregular when it comes to the informal past tense and the te form. So it's ite. Benkyoshimas. Suika o kite. Tabemashita. So I cut a watermelon and ate it. I love watermelon. Watermelon is so good here in Japan. So sweet. Particularly at this 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 a uh, local grocery store we have called Tsuruya. Mm. It's cheap too. It's like for a quarter of a full size watermelon, it's like three dollars or something like that. Or three fifty. Today was a little more expensive, eh? Four dollars. Anyway. Suika o kite tabemashita. Not every time, but it's usually pretty big. So then, super ni ite uchi ni kairimasu. So this is sort of a sequence that I go to the supermarket and then I go home. I go to the supermarket and go home. Super ni ite uchi ni kairimasu. Maybe it's like someone's asking you, what are you going to do? What, what are you doing? Like you're getting in your car. Ah, super ni ite uchi ni kairimasu. So I'm going to go to the supermarket and then I'm going to go home. That's basically what this is. It's a nice, useful way to make sequences of events. Our dialogue continues with C harassing A. Eh, tsumaranai. Gomen nasai. Ja, oshiete? Doko ni itta? えっと、マクドナルド。マクドナルド。ビッグマックを食べて、モスバーガーに行きました。はあ。フォースピード。えー、つまらない。ごめんなさい。じゃあ、教えて。どこに行ったえっと、マクドナルド。マクドナルド。Alright, let's go ahead and see what that is in English. So, C says, E tsumaranai. So, in this sentence, this E could be translated as boo, boring. So, tsumaranai is boring. That's, that's basically what this is. E tsumaranai. E boring. Gomen nasai. Of course, you probably know that that means sorry. Our next sentence was, Ja, oshiete. Well, if you're sorry, well then, tell me. Ja, oshiete. Doko ni itta? Now, I threw in this as a little bit of a curve. It's not really a curveball. I'm just showing you that the past tense is exactly the same as the te form, the informal past tense. Remember, I'm doing more of an informal dialogue today. So, doko is where, and itta is the past tense, the informal past tense of go. The te form is also itte. So literally, the only thing you have to change is the te to a ta, and you've got the informal past tense. Sweet, right? So, doko ni itta? Where did you go? Eto, um, makudonaru McDonald's. If you remember last week's dialogue, A-san and B-san went to McDonald's. B-san hated the Big Mac, thought it was terrible, and that McDonald's was a dirty filth, like a garbage pile. And she took B to Moss Burger, which is another chain of burger joints in Japan. And they got rice burgers. Well, burgers that have rice patties instead of buns. On we go. McDonald's? McDonald's? Big Mac wo tabete Moss Burger ni ikimashita. We ate a Big Mac and went to Moss Burger. So this is a good one because you'll notice that I mentioned, you might remember that I mentioned that the final verb in the clause indicates what the tense is for the whole the whole thing. So big maku wo tabete. From there we don't know if this was past tense or if it's present tense or if it's continuing or, or what it is. Mos baga ni ikimashita. Here we see that it's the past tense because you couldn't have eaten something and then like in the future, right? Anyway, doesn't matter. Past tense and then go to Mossberger. That was a really weird explanation. Sorry about that. Anyway, this just tells you what the full tense of the clause is. Big Mac wo tabete Mos baga ni ikimashita. We ate a Big Mac and went to Mossberger. Ha? Huh? Huh? This is just a, an exasperated, like, what? What? And that's it. 
And that's the end of whatever that was. What was that again? Sequence of events. So the next section is you may or may I in Japanese. So let's go ahead and jump over to the chat and see if we have any questions. I see Kyushu Trail. How's it going? Good to see you, man. Hope you're having a good night. Uh, TikTok. <coughs> it's rough when going to... In oh, yeah. Okay. I love showers. Amen to showers, says Aubergine. Aubergine, good evening. I love showers with Kyushu Trail. Kyushu Trail is all sweaty. Nice. Chris Lane, baths are even better. I like onsens. Onsens, I agree, are the best. Showers are greater than baths, says Kyushu Trail. In my own home... Well, okay. I was going to say I've never taken a bath in this apartment, and that's not entirely true. Because before I went to New Zealand, I lived in a house nearby. But before I lived in that house, I lived in this apartment many years ago. And at that point in time, I think I took four or five sh baths in this apartment. But since I've come back to Japan, I haven't taken a... Uh, let's, let's turn this off. There we go. Okay, I finally got chat on the screen. I haven't taken a single bath in Japan. All right. <laughs> I mean, in this apartment. I love onsens. Oh, I'm going to have to go, but I'll catch up on the rest later. See you later, Kevin. I think you're probably already gone, but thank you for stopping by. Uh, with a sequence of events, is it always te form and then a second event, or could you use to? No. Mm. Big Mac o taberu to nan to ka o shimasu. Um, you could use to, but it's a different, it means something different. So te, followed by another sequence of events, is... It's just a sequence of events, right? Taberu to nani nani. That means uh, if I eat something, mm -hmm. if I eat something, I will do this. So, Big Mac wo taberu to futorimasu. So, if I eat a Big Mac, I'll get fat. Big Mac wo taberu to futorimasu. That's the plate form of futoru, which means to gain weight. So, yeah, you can use to, but it's different. It's a different meaning, right? It, it has the meaning of if, whereas te is more like and. So it's a pretty big difference, but you can use to. It's just another uh, conjunction, junction. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and Yuki, of course. Can you keep, oops, can you keep using the te for multiple times or only once before ending the sentence? Jennifer Liu. You can use it as much as you want. For example, okite toshokan ni te benkyou shimasu. You can absolutely say that. Ah, oh, Dan already answered you. Perfect. Suika ga daisuki de oishii da yo. Ah, okay. Daisuki de? So, we're not covering that today. But you can also use de to connect sentences after nouns and adjectives. So, you, you were close there, uh, stari risu. Um, but we're not covering that today. But basically, for that sentence, you need to use suika ga daisuki de oishii da yo. Is what you would say there. Uh, study disu. A san is not lying about that not being a date. Definitely not a date. So, when describing a series of events, is the first verb in the sequence always the one that occurs first chronologically? Generally speaking, I'd say yes. Uh, seikai. Seikai, Michael. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, actually, I can stay longer. Yay! How's it going? Diglets. Yep. Oh, nice. Kevin is back. Why not use bigumaku wo tabeta? Mosbaga ni ikimashita. You could, but you it wouldn't be two sentences. You you'd have to get rid of that period, and you'd have I mean the comma and make it a pyramid, a period, pyramid, not a pyramid. So it'd be two sentences. Big mako tabemashita. Stop. Mosbaga ni ikimashita. But that's not a sequence of events. That's just describing two different events. They're not necessarily in sequence. So it's just two different things. So no, you can't you can't do that. I mean, the sentences themselves are fine, but they don't actually connect to each other. So you have to use the te form to connect them. So it has to be big mac wo tabete most burger ni ikimashita. Most burger for dessert? Nope, they got rice rice burgers. Ah, ah suika wa onaka no naka ni haite o amedeka kara ohayo. <laughs> I wish that was the continuation. That would be a great sentence. Suika wa onaka ni aite Amerika kara ohayo. That's actually a great sequence of sentences right there. I love it. You guys should all do that. Somebody should start a sentence and end it at the te form, and then the person after them should just continue it with another full sentence. I would love to see what we could do with that. 
That could be really funny. That was already accidentally super funny. Suika wa onaka ni haite. Amerika kara o hayo. Love it, Walter Ditto. Good morning. Come to Japan, thank you. Yes, the goods. Onaka ni haite. Onaka ni haite. Drink some water, Andy. Makudonaldo ga daiski. Daiki dai des. Watashi no kodomo daiski des. Okay. <laughs> You love your kid or your kid loves Suika? Can you string more than two events? Yes, you can. I think I already answered that, but yes. You can just keep using the Tay form indefinitely, just like the no particle. Ah, Suika ga daisuki de mainichi tabete hoshi. So I, I think you mean tabetai. So tabete hoshi, it's very close. But tabete hoshi means Yuki's clapping at how close you were. Tabete hoshi means. That you want me to eat watermelon every day. Tabete hoshi means you want someone to do something. When you want to do something, you need to use another conjugation, which we're going over in a few lessons, which is tai. It ends in tai. Tabetai. Just so you can learn that really quick, I think it's just the mas stem plus tai. So, hashiri tai. Yeah, it's just the mas stem plus tai becomes the want to conjugation. Oh, hi, Fatema. Good to see you. Hey, brother, says Hemid, Hemi Redman. Nice to see you. My kid loves MCD. I haven't been there in so long. I think I liked it when I was a kid, too, and when I was in college. Probably a little bit too much. But anyway, think we're all good? No, que no more questions, maybe? I hope I got to your questions there. If you have any more questions, I will get them on the next round. Miss the Wa. Hmm? Where'd you miss it? Miss the Wa, where? Makudonaldo ga dai kirai desu. Watashi no kodomo. Ah, wa. Ah, wa dai suki desu. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, nice. Yes, you did miss the wa. That would have made it perfect. Nice. Yabe, sumimasen. Nande, daijoubi desu. Ah, very close try. Ah, mainichi suika o tabete. Oh, next someone has to continue that sentence after Dan. While I continue on to you may or and may I in Japanese. So you may in Japanese is pretty easy. It's just the te form plus mo e. So mo is the mo particle. E is good. It's right. It's just good. And then you can add des to the end of it to make it a little bit more polite. So te mo e. May I, the question form is. Te form plus mo plus e, mo e. Now I have these in parentheses because if you just raise your raise your intonation at the end, it's sort of a informal may I <clears throat> or can I. If you add deska, that's the more formal version. So te mo e deska, and that's how you say you may and may I. So some examples of that are akete mo e deska. May I open it? The informal version would be akete mo e. Remember, this is just the mo particle plus e, which means good. So a literal translation of this, a literal translation would be something like, would it be good if I opened it? That would be somewhat of a more literal translation of it. Is it good if I open it? Basically. But it, it doesn't make sense in English that way. So we change it to may I open it or can I open it? Aketemo i desu ka? Suatte mo ii desu ka? Can I please sit down? May I please sit down? Either way would be fine. Denwa shite mo ii? The, the formal version of this would be Denwa shite mo ii desu ka? Can I call you please? Denwa shite mo ii? And that's it. That's how you use the, the uh, may I or can I. It's just the te form plus mo ii. And that's the mo particle plus E, which means good, right? And that's it. Some more complicated sentences for us to try out are Sono mai ni hiru gohan wo tabete mo i desu ka? May I have a lunch? Oops, there's no A there. May I have lunch before that? May I have lunch before that? Sono mai ni hiru gohan wo tabete mo i desu ka? Now, sono mai ni, we haven't covered that expression yet, but it's just my, which means before, and sono, which is the this, right? Um, that, I'm sorry, before that. So it's just translated literally like you see it. Before that. 
sonomai ni, the ni particle is the one that you use with expressions of time, basically. Sonomai ni, hiru gohan mo tabete mo ii desu ka? <clears throat> May I have lunch before that? Sorry about that A, I'll get rid of that later. Omatsuri ni te odotte mo ii desu ka? Can I go to the festival and dance, please? Odotte mo ii desu ka? Can I dance, please? So we use the uh, the connecting sequence te form and the temoi may I form. Can I go to the festival and dance, please? Omatsuri ni te odotte mo ii desu ka? Odoru is to dance, by the way. I don't think that's been covered in Genki yet. I'm not positive, but odoru, that's to dance. Gohan no mai, no, uh, ato. Gohan no ato ni aisu o tabete mo ii. Please, can I eat ice cream after the meal? All right, you know what? I'm going to fix these little English. I'm sorry. I checked these multiple times before, but sometimes I miss these little thingies. I eat after the meal. There we go. And let's bring that back up onto the screen. I'll cut that out in the stream cut. Gohan no mai a gohan no ato ni ice wo tabete mo ii. Please, can I eat ice cream after the meal? So, gohan no ato. Ato means after. Ato ni. And you put use the no particle con to connect it to what, after what, you want to do something. So, gohan no ato. After the meal. Ni ice wo tabete mo ii. Please, can I eat ice cream after the meal? And back up here just to cover that for my stream cut. We're gonna go ahead and say, where was that? Sono mai ni hiru gohan wo tabete mo ii desu ka? May I have lunch before that? There we go. Um, we go to the dialogue and then I will get to your questions immediately after that. Datte, deito janakatta. Shitsumon shite mo ii? Iiyo. B san ga suki? Kaite mo ii desu ka? Kaite wa ikemasen. Full speed. Datte deito janakatta. Shitsumon shite mo ii? Ii yo. B san ga suki? Eh, kaite mo ii desu ka? Kaite wa ikemasen. Let's check out what that means in English. Datte deito janakatta. Okay, this is new. It doesn't show up in Genki at all. I don't even think it shows up in the second Genki. I may be wrong about that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Datte. This means because, as I said. So this means that I've mentioned this before. Datte. And it's sort of like a flustered expression. You've probably, if you watch anime, you've heard this before. Datte. It just means because. So there, there has to be a sentence before this, right? Someone said something and you're reiterating something you've already said and you're frustrated that you have to do it again. So you say, because, as I said, it wasn't a date. Datte. Super useful. Um, it's not really super polite, but it's super useful. Datte deito janakatta. Shitsumon shite mo ii? So this is, we've, we've dropped the desu ka because we're among friends here. Shitsumon means a question and you, you do a question. So the literal translation is, can I do a question? I guess the literal translation would be, is it good if I do a question? Shitsumon shite mo ii? Can I ask a question? Iiyo. Sure. B san ga suki? Do you like B? Pretty straightforward. We covered ski in, I believe, lesson five last week. I think it was last time, two weeks ago. Or lesson four, I don't remember. I, I have a terrible memory when it comes to what lesson things were. Anyway. Eh, kaite mo ii desu ka? What? Can I go home? He's just flustered. Kaite mo ii desu ka? Kaite wa ikemasen. This is what the next section covers, and it's forbidding things. I forbid you to go home. It could also be translated as you must not go home. Kaite wa ikemasen. And that brings us to prohibiting activities in Japanese. And that is our next section. But before we get there, let's go ahead and see what's happening over in the chat. I hope everyone is having a good time tonight. Is everyone having a good time tonight? Is anyone continuing Dan's sentences? Mainichi suika o tabete muzu o nonde. Mizu. Mizu o nonde, probably. 
That's probably what you wanted to say. C anthonym. I want you to eat watermelon every day, Andy. Fair enough. I would like to eat watermelon every day. I have been eating watermelon almost every day. I'm about to fast for a couple days, though. Could you put together a list of reading material for beginners? Um, in the Discord. I think you're in the Discord, right, Walter? I'm not positive about that. But in the Discord, on the in the Japanese Resources channel, uh, on the pinned posts up in the right corner of Discord, there's a pinned post, a little pin. There is a Google form, not a form, I'm sorry, a Google, like an Excel spreadsheet, basically. And in there, there's a link to 500 pages of free graded reading material. So it's made by a Tankobom, I think one of the companies that makes the main Japanese graded readers out there. And it's not as good as the ones you can pay for, the graded readers, but it's pretty good. Like the first 100 or 200 pages are super like dumb, easy, stupid, easy. You could probably read them no problem. But as it gets further along, there's a lot of good reading material in it. So I don't have the link off the top of my head, but it is in there if you need it. There is um, there's a ton of reading material on there. Also, um, NHK Newsweb, Easy is a great resource for reading. Um, Toide ni ikimasu. All right, so what was that full sentence? Mainichi suika o tabete mizu o nonde toide ni ikimasu. Says Jennifer Lee. Nice. Hey, hemiri da. For Andy from Kyushu, thank you. Is there a color code for these example sentences? Red equals verbs, black equals time, green equals object. Glad you asked. I only have so many colors to work with. So generally speaking, generally, there is a color scheme, but it's not always, it's not always true. So generally speaking, if we go back, verbs are red. Verbs are generally red. Uh, direct objects are usually light green in most basic sentence types. So like uh, Big Mac wo taberu. So notice that the direct object Big Mac is light green. The verb is red. Wo, the particles are usually black. Um, locations I usually put in pink. Uh, topics, so like names before wa topics, I generally put in orange. So that's generally the case, but I've only got so many colors to work with. So it's not always the case. Ah, also adjectives like e are usually in light blue. Uh, question markers and the question marker are usually purple. So that's generally what the colors are, but it's not 100% of the time because sometimes there's just too many different uh, grammar points within a single sentence to be con super consistent. But I've been trying to be as consistent as possible the past couple, the past like three or four lessons. Totemo <sighs> <clears throat> desu ka? Demo ii desu ka? Ah, yes. Can I take it? Totte ii o says Dan. Nice. See a zero chill for sure. Also, it would be very helpful if you shared these Google Slides with us. View only would totally be fine, but I think they're great resources even though I have the Genki textbook. So, I do share all the slides in my Patreon content. So, it's in... Oh, I haven't put them up yet. I actually haven't put these slides up yet. I used to share all of them on the Discord, but I ended up taking them down just because I was cutting channels. I will start sharing them again. I promise. Right now, I've got most of my slides on the Patreon, I believe. And I'll have them up there tomorrow if they're not up there yet. But definitely. <clears throat> That's the first sentence I've ever said using this structure when I was in Osaka, the Osaka castle. Nice. Uh, for a picture, tottemo ii desu ka? Nice. That's a good one to use. Janakatta is covered in lesson seven, I think. I'm now in eight. Oops. My bad. That's the past tense of janai. I thought we covered that in lesson four, but I guess not. I think he shares the slides on Patreon. Yes. Looking at the English and Japanese sentences, I realize that the structure is almost always flowing in different directions, so it's hard to translate from English to Japanese and vice versa. Yes, they're usually opposite directions, very often at least. It's not always the case, but it often happens that way. You get used to it, though. My goal, it actually makes it easier to switch completely over to Japanese, I feel like, because, like, thinking. Because the grammar is just so different that it's easier to just let go of English completely and just let yourself think in Japanese. At least for me it was, because of the difference. My goal for the next section, be able to say, Stop! You must not hop on pop. <laughs> pop no we ni. Ah, that would be, it would, I don't know how I could say that like in a nice, a pleasant way. Anyway, see antonym, I think it's janakatta, verb conjugations before lesson six. Yeah, I think it is. I think you're right. I think it's in lesson four, Jennifer. There's a Discord? Someone send the link, please. Ah, thank you, Dan. Thank you for the link. That's the Google Doc he was referring to. Nice. Ida in desu, in da yo. 
you can't actually say e da, just so you know, uh, study this. So you could say e desu yo, because the des just makes the e more polite. It's not actually really doing anything. So e on its own is already informal. It's the informal. An adjective on its own, and e is an adjective, doesn't need da. It's already a complete sentence. So you, you don't use da. E yo is how you would say that. I'll try to find the easy reader link. Here's the Discord. Thank you. Does the third edition specifically say wa in wa ikemasen is pronounced as wa? Tabete wa. I don't think it does actually. It probably doesn't. It probably doesn't. Let's go ahead and check. That's a good question, Michael. Um <clears throat> It's a good good idea. I'm glad that you pointed that out because I probably wouldn't have thought to point it out. But in the next section we're covering, te wa ikemasen, the wa is pronounced as wa. You must not do, if someone asks you permission, da, 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 it does not cover that in Genki. It's a good point. Very good point. In case anyone needs it, verbs read. Thank you, Jennifer. I'll have to put that up somewhere, and hopefully I can stick to it as much as possible. Mina-san, konnichiwa. Good evening, Pat. Good to see you, Patrick. Hop-hop no e ni hop shite wa ikemasen. <laughs> nice. That is the link to the easy graded reach. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think, um, Amakro, I think you aren't able to share links in here. Only Dan is probably able to share links. So that's bummer. Unless you've shared it in the Discord. If you put it up in the Discord, maybe... That's what you're talking about. Hopefully that's it. Okay. I hope you are too, Crazy Bull. So let's go ahead and get the chat off the screen for now. And let's continue on with, let's go back up for a second, prohibition in Japanese. Not prohibition of drinking or anything like that, just prohibiting activities. And it's really straightforward. It's just the te form plus wa. And this is what uh, was just pointed out in chat. It's not ha. It's once again just like the wa particle pronounced wa, like w a. Ikemasen. Ikemasen was, means must not do. Ikemasen. It actually, I guess, is go, right? Ikemasen is like a, the must not conjugation of iku da yo ne. Ike, iku, ikemasen. It's pretty much the same, right? You can go, can't go. だからこの行けませんはそれだよね. Yeah. It's basically ikeru, ikeru, can go. It's um it's based on that. It's a grammar point based on that. You don't have to worry about that too much. But anyway, te form plus wa plus ikemasen, which means cannot do or must not do, gives you a prohibition. Hashite wa ikemasen. I forbid you to run or you must not run. So basically, if you were telling rules in class or something, you might say something like, Hashite wa ikemasen. Actually, in, in my kindergarten class often, when I was um, asking the kids if they knew whether or not they were allowed to do something, I might say something like, Basu no naka ni wa hashite wa ikemasen. And I would let them say the sen, because that would sort of, Re reinforce it for them. Hashite wa ikemasen. So if I were to say, Hashite wa ikemas, that means you can run. I, a better way to say that would be, Hashite mas, but that's, that's besides the point. But anyway, just pausing like that for the kids sort of reinforce them, got them involved. Hashite wa ikemasen. That means I forbid you to run or you must not run. Tabete wa ikemasen. I must not eat. Depends on the context, obviously. It could also be you must not eat or they must not eat or whatever. Tomatte wa ikemasen. I forbid you to stop. This stop is not like yameru, yamete. This is stop like stopping a vehicle. This is actually the kanji you would see on a stop sign. In Japan, it would say tomare, which is the command to stop. But this is tomatte wa ikemasen. I forbid you to stop. You must not stop. <clears throat> and that's it. That's that's the whole form. So jumping into the dialogue, we have kaite wa ikemasen. So, kaite wa ikemasen. Nande? Oshiete B-san ga suki desu ka? Sore wa 
聞いてはいけませんえー、つまらないトースピード書いてはいけませんそう書いてはいけませんなんで教えて B さんが好きですかそれは聞いてはいけませんえー、つまらない So I just want to point out really quickly that you'll notice that this is formal, right? Te wa ikemasen is very formal language. You're not going to say it generally. It's often on signs or if you're being in a very formal situation where you're giving out listing rules, basically.、Um, so it's super formal. So, why are these friends who have been talking, even within this part of the dialogue, speaking informally using te wa ikemasen? And the, the reason for that is actually really happens is when you're really, really emphasizing something. Or you're being sort of not sarcastic, but, but sort of sarcastic or just playful almost. It's sort of playful. Speaking super formally in this way,、um, it can be a playful way to speak with your friends.、Um, just being like joking around almost. Like, you must not go home, or you're, I forbid you to go home. Like, there's less formal ways to say that. But saying it that way can seem sort of playful if you go super formal. You can also go super, super, super formal when you're really, really angry. And that's a form of sarcasm in Japanese. I mentioned to someone in the Discord the other day that sarcasm doesn't really work in Japanese, not the way that we think of sarcasm. But one way I've seen a sort of sarcasm used in Japanese is when people are extremely angry using. Super, super, super formal Japanese with people who are very close to them, which is very interesting. And that can be a sort of sarcastic way to talk to people. But let's go ahead and go over the English. Kaite wa ikemasen. That's how the last, sen- that last dialogue ended, by the way. So I'm asking, or A is asking, you forbid me to go home? Kaite wa ikemasen. So, exactly. Kaite wa ikemasen. I forbid you to go home, or you must not go home. Nande? Why? Oshiete? Tell me. B san ga ski desu ka? Do you like B? Sore wa kite wa ikemasen. I forbid you to ask that. Eh, tsumara nai. Boo. Boring. Pretty straightforward, right? Our next sentence is explaining reasons in Japanese. And this is also really, I don't know, it's a little strange the way Genki taught this, but it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to be going over it pretty quickly again. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on in chat. I hope everyone is following along.、Uh, the related audio, let's go ahead and see this link. That, da, 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 da. Hope everyone's having, yep. I had a problem with. That,、uh, that problem in Genki too. Yeah, fair enough. It didn't tell me if it was pronounced wa or wa. Yeah, that, I, didn't even, I didn't even think of it. So I imagine that they, they probably didn't either. I think when you've been doing it for too long, certain ways, things like that are really easy, even in final publications, to forget about. But I'm glad you mentioned it. Thank you. That way I could point it out. The related audio helps with it. Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to mention listening to the. the、uh, On the app or whatever, the listening can help with that. I was lucky to take the class in college six years ago, but when I was going over it again, I was second guessing myself. Fair enough. Ah,、uh, yeah, I probably blanked out on the audio portion then. With tabako su, what is the su? It wasn't covered previously in Genki. Yeah, that was silly. <sighs> so Genki presents the vocabulary word as tabako wo su, but it's kind of weird because it's actually a sentence. Tabako is the direct object, and the verb to smoke something is su. So I don't know why they presented that as a full thing. I think it's probably because in Japan, the only thing you can legally smoke is tobacco. So generally speaking, when you use the verb su, it's going to almost always be in relation to tobacco. And by the way, tobacco. In Japanese, doesn't just mean any tobacco, it generally means cigarettes. So, tobacco, it really means to smoke a cigarette, is what tobacco su means. I have seen a guy on a bicycle with super fat tires biking by my place with a pipe in his mouth. He was like a 25 year old dude, and he biked by my house 
with giant like super fat wheels on his bike like for <clears throat> for like winter tires basically seriously like as thick as my head and a pipe like a like an old man pipe that you'd see in some kind of old I don't know, like a cowboy movie or something it was pretty hysterical anyway tobacco su means to smoke cigarettes and su is the verb to smoke oh you already figured it out okay sweet <coughs> gotta go good night who is that good luck on the hike tomorrow ah see you later kishu trail thanks for stopping by i think i probably already missed you but i hope you have a good hike too Oshiete by itself is a little confusing to me. What does it mean on its own in the te form? So on its own, oshieru, which is the verb to teach or to tell, generally to tell someone something that they don't know. It just means tell me. It could also be translated as teach me. Um, sorry, I've got sunscreen pouring into my eyes, I feel like. Um, it can also mean teach me. But in this situation, it's a better translation would be tell me tell me what you're talking about or tell me about in in that sentence if we go back it was a uh, hold on one second <clears throat> where was it oshiete tell me b san ga suki desu ka this is what you want me to tell you this is what you, you want me to teach you the knowledge of whether or not b san is someone that a san likes do you like b please tell me so that's all it means. And it's a request to tell you something. So the te form is, of course, a pol uh, not a polite request. It's just a request. So you're requesting that the person teach you something or tell you something. Uh, just to use a verb to suck. To suck. Yeah, OK. That means, or to vacuum. Oh, interesting. It could also mean to smoke. Mm. So that's it. Suck on it. タバコがオブジェクトだね。そう、だからスーは一つのさ動詞だから目的語が必要でしょ。うん。をスーだから。うん。うん、もちろんだけど、ワンワードじゃないの、その to smoke, to breathe in, to inhale, to suck is another uh, meaning of it. To sip, to slurp, to absorb, to soak up, to kiss. To smoke. That's why I'm not going to be a good person. That's why I'm not going to be a good person. That's why I'm not going to be a So it can also mean to smoke. So it can mean to suck as well for a vacuum cleaner. I, 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 I forgot about that meaning, but it does also mean to smoke. Uh, I was the one asking sarcasm. Ah, right. I'm glad you explained it here. Sweet. Oh, I didn't realize that was you. Okay, nice. Oshiete can be like, tell me. Tomete. Otousan wo tonde wa... Tonde wa imasen. Tonde wa ikemasen. I'm assuming is what you meant. You can't fly, Dad. Okay. I only know hiragana and katakana. Should I start with this playlist? Yeah, you'll be fine. Uh, the playlist, every single kanji, at least the first appearance of it, has furigana above the kanji. So there's no situation where I only use kanji on its own without at least introducing the furigana above it on the first occurrence of that verb on a, any particular slide. So even if I had that slide, that word in the slide before, I show the furigana again on the next slide. Because I know many people, most people probably can't read most of the kanji that are showing up in this lesson just yet. Kudasai. The textbook in second edition is tabako wo su, but why not tabako wo su? I wonder why they didn't do that. I'm not sure. This is a bit of off topic, but I'm trying to write my Discord introduction. I want to say that I'm Chinese Canadian. Is it chugoku ke da yo ne? Chugoku ke. It would be chugoku ke. Chu. No, that was that wrong. Hmm? Ah, no, no. Let me get rid of that. There you go. 中国系カナダ人 
I thought there was a no as well. So I was wrong on that. Nice. Chugoku ke Kanada jin. So it means Chinese. What's that ke translate to exactly? Jisho. Ke. Yeah, type, right? Let's, let's get the exact translation. Type of something like that, yeah. System lineage. Ooh. That's where it's. Okay, lineage. Interesting. In this case, it's translated as lineage. I would have just said type. But anyway, so you're of Chinese lineage, Canadian. Nice. Chugoku ke Kanada jin. I learned something tonight. That's awesome. Asoko de atsui. Asoko ga atsui. Yes, it's very hot. Very hot in here. But it's mostly because I've got these giant lights shining down on me. So you guys can see my, my, uh, my sweaty face. Otherwise, how would you see it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Thank you for all your questions, guys. I will get to your questions at the end of this next section. Any more questions that we might have. So the next section is explaining a reason for something in Japanese. And that is using kara. Now, I just want to I wanna blow off some, not steam, but I want to mention that I don't like that Genki teaches this in this way in this lesson. I think they should have taught the other usage of kara first because it's way more useful and way more common. And that is, kara can be used as a conjunction. You can connect sentences together using kara to mean because. So, tabeta kara nani nani shimashita. So, because I ate, I did this. Or I, I ate, so I did this. And that that's the most common usage of kara, in my opinion, is as a conjunction. We have a sentence. Uh, I don't know. B san ga suki desu kara nani nani shimasu. I like B, so I will do this thing. That is the most common usage of kara. But beyond this little sentence I'm talking to you about right now, I'm not going to cover it right now because it does cover it eventually. Instead, for some reason, it teaches you this usage of kara, which I personally never use. You can use it. It's not wrong. It's grammatically fine. I just, I don't like how it sounds. I think it's, it's, I don't know. I don't like it, but I'm going to teach it to you anyway. So to say, basically to explain a reason for something, you've got the reason plus at the end of it, I guess, kara. So for example, isogashi desu kara, because I'm busy. I mean, it's not true. I do use this sometimes, but the other one is way more common. So for these sentences, generally, you'd have to have like a situation before it. So maybe in this situation, you might say something like, I'm not going to go to the party tomorrow. Why? So in the next sentence, you'd say, And that's how Genki teaches it. And the reason I don't like it is because most people wouldn't say that. They would say, That's how most people would speak. They would say they're not they're busy, so they're not gonna go to the party. But for some reason Genki teaches it as I'm not gonna go to the party. Because I'm busy. It just sounds so unnatural. It's not wrong, and some people you know, there are situations where you might do that. You might say something like, you might have a situation where like you say to a friend, ah, so no party ni wa ikimasen. I'm not gonna go to that party. And then they look at you like, huh? And then you're like, ah, isogashi desu kara, because I'm busy. So that's the situation that this would happen in, but it's not nearly as common as when you would use kara as a conjunction, which I use literally every day, all the time. So just keep that in mind with this section, it's not that important. Ikimasu kara, because I will go. Suki janai desu kara, because I do not like this. So I, these these aren't super important sentences, but basically I just wanted to point out that you can end desu kara. You can have ikimasu, so a verb, a verb plus kara, or, you know, janai desu kara. And anything, any ending can end in kara. So iku kara, ikimasu kara, isogashii kara, isogashii desu kara, suki janai desu kara. Just at the end of any sentence, you add kara, and it means because. And that's where I'm going to leave that because, because it's not that straight, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward and it's also not, I don't, I don't think as useful as the conjugation or the, 
the conjunction which I just explained and which we will go over in a later lesson. But I am going to use it here in the dialogue. So let's go ahead and cover. Hazukashi desu kara. Kawaii. Yamete kudasai. Ja, kaite mo i yo. So desu ka. Tsumara nai desu kara. Full speed. Hazukashi desu kara. Kawaii. Yamete kudasai. Ja, kaite mo i yo. So desu ka. Tsumara nai desu kara. Let's go over the English for that. Hazukashi desu kara. Hazukashi means to be embarrassed or I am embarrassed. It's an adjective that means embarrassed. Because I'm embarrassed. And that's,、uh, if you remember in the last sentence, it's why, it's basically explaining why、uh, A doesn't want to tell C whether or not he likes B. That's confusing. In the Patreon, when I go over this dialogue, A is myself, C is another character of Hiyuki's, and B is Yuki. Just so you're aware, it makes a little more sense without, with actual names. Kawaii! Ah, cute! Yamete kudasai. Please stop. <laughs> Or please quit it. Ja, kaite mo iyo. Fine. You can go home. So desu ka? Is that so? Or, oh yeah? Tsumara nai desu kara. Yeah, because you're boring. Tsumara nai desu kara. And that brings us to offering assistance in Japanese, which I believe. It's going to be super straightforward because we've already covered all the rules for it. It's just a separate usage of it, which is almost the same as the usage we already covered. But before we get to that, I believe that's the last section today. Let's go over to chat and see how everyone is doing. Ah, in Chinese, ke kinda means series. Ah, okay. That makes sense. I think it can also mean that in Japanese. I gotta go. I'll finish this up later. Thanks for the stream, Andy. Thank you for coming, Radclaw. Have a good night or day. Lineage works too. Ha <laughs> ha. Michael, hi. Atsi. See you, Red Claw. Thank you. Sweet gold. Tabete kara. That's another usage of kara. Yeah, you can. <laughs> that, would be a, that would have been a better thing to teach in this lesson. Te kara. So, te kara, the te form followed by kara, that is a real sequence of events. That's like immediate sequencing. So, immediately after I eat, sui go tabete kara, after I finish. Pretty much after I finish doing that activity. So, after I finish eating watermelon, I'm gonna do something. Suiko tabete kara nemas. After I finish eating this watermelon, I'm going to sleep. Suiko tabete kara o kane arimase. What? <laughs> after I eat watermelon, I don't have any money for atsuhito. Oi, kara is tough with the switching around of it. I agree, Genki stumbled with introducing it. I agree 100%. In Japanese, K is also series. What's the more common conjunction? What do you mean by that? Like, among what? Kara? Between kara and what, I guess. Kara is super common.、Uh, suika wa tabete kara, onaka ga suita, suita, ta. And you need ita there. So, after you finish eating suika, you're, you got hungry. <laughs> Close. So, it's suita, suita. Otherwise, it was perfect. I can't wrap my head around how Genki introduced kara. No, I'm not a fan of it. Sounds like the English way where we put because earlier. That's actually a relief because I also think it sounds weird with kara at the end. I feel like people would want the because first, and they would. Do you mean you're confused because kara and because kara?、Uh, oh, not the particles, just the because conjunction. Kara. Ah, yeah. How Genki teaches it and go to the. Yeah. No, the one with it in the middle as a conjunction is way more common. Like, like I said, I pretty much. Besides the situation where I explained earlier, where maybe I'm, I'm trying to explain something that I just said and I feel like it needs explanation, that's like the only time I'd use it. But even then, I feel like there's better ways to do it. Whereas as a conjunction, I use it every day. Uh, to explain reasons, like as a conjunction in the middle. It's way better that way. So, just like if you feel a little bit off you, with this, with this kara taught in Genki in this lesson, don't worry about it too much.、Um, it is a legitimate grammar point and you can use it, but you're not going to use it as much as the conjunction, which will come in a later lesson. I just wish they put it earlier. I get annoyed at Genki sometimes, probably way too much. <laughs> anyway. 
All right, so we don't have any more questions, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the final section. It's already 10.35. Man, it's a fast night. Is it fair to say that kara is normally used for time? Like, as the bookend for made, is it fair... Oh, where'd it go? The question disappeared. Um, good to see you, Yato. Nice. Just in case you still want to ask that question, is it fair to say that kara is normally used for time? Like, as the bookend for made? It's not, no. Um, it is used for that as well, but it's a different meaning. It's a different usage of kara. It's a different meaning entirely. So the conjunction kara and this one in genki, which is basically the conjunction kara, but used at the end. Like, if you took these sentences that genki are presenting and just literally moved them to the beginning of the situation that they've presented, that would be the conjunction kara. Like, if I... I'm going to... I'm going to bring out the book. I'm bringing out the book. If we take a sentence, I, I guarantee you I can do this. I didn't even look at the sentences, and I'm willing to bet it works. Okay. So they have situation, period, explanation, kara. So here's the thing. Basu ni norimashou. Takushi wa takai desu kara. Now, if we just took that second sentence and moved it back to the beginning, watch this. Takushi wa takai desu kara basu ni norimashou. That's how they should have taught it. Makes way more sense. You literally just reverse it, make it a conjunction. Way more useful. I'm getting too annoyed at that. It would have made more sense. And a bit more useful. But anyway, just keep that in mind. It's literally the same exact thing. It is the conjunction, but they're teaching it for some reason as a sentence ender, which it is not. Uh, the kara that is used for time is a different kara. It means from a certain time. So, juji kara, juichiji made. So, it means from 10 until 11. So, juji kara, juichiji made. So, it's, a, it's actually a different word entirely. Which, it's also common, but it's just different. Oh, you meant just placing in the middle. I got you now. I thought you meant another word entirely instead of kara. No, no, no. It's exactly the same. It's just much more common when it connects sentences as opposed to being at the end of a second sentence. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense. Exactly. Damn you, Genki! Says the lone draftsman. <laughs> I agree. I'll just put that up on chat so everybody can see in the replay. Damn you, Genki! Anyway, on we go to offering assistance in Japanese. We covered this structure in the last sentence, and it was the mashoka. In the last lesson, we covered it as shall we walk, for example. Arukimashou ka? Shall we walk? In this lesson, it's, it's used in a slightly different way. And that is, shall I do something for you, basically. Uh, we already covered this, the structure in the last lesson, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but basically you take the mas stem. If you don't know how to make the mas stem, jump back into the lesson three stream or the lesson four stream where I go over it even faster. And you can learn to make the mas stem there. But basically you take the mas stem and just connect masho ka, ka is the question marker. <clears throat> And that's that. And that can mean, depending on the situation, shall I do something for you? For example, tetsudai ka? Shall I help you? Hon wo yomimashou ka? Shall I read a book? Hiru gohan wo tsukurimashou ka? Shall I make lunch? And that's it. It's um in the last lesson we covered sentences like arukimashou ka? And that obviously couldn't be, shall I walk? It's more of, shall we walk? <clears throat> because, yomimashou means, let's read. And, yomimashou ka means, shall we read? But, depending on the context, it can mean, shall I do something? So, <coughs> in, the, in the dialogue for Gen this lesson in Genki, an older woman gets on the bus, and Robert, who is having some trouble in class, I guess he's falling asleep a lot, he, um, he shows his gentlemanness, if that's not a word, he valiantly offers her his seat, and when she says she doesn't need it, he offers to hold her bags. So he says, shall I hold your bags? And uh, that would be, nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? So, shall I do something? So, contextually speaking, the woman obviously knows he doesn't mean 
let's hold the bags, right? Contextually, we know that it's shall I read a book, but there's no difference stylistically, even in pronunciation. It's exactly the same as let's hold the bags, but contextually speaking, we would know that it means shall I do this thing for you. So jumping into the dialogue, we have ojama shimashita. Hi, mata ne. Ah, B san. Konnichiwa. Kino arigato. I desu yo. Tanoshikatta desu. Ah, boku mo nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? Ja. Arigato gozaimasu. And full speed. Ojama shimashita. Hai, mata ne. Ah, B san. Konnichiwa. Kino arigato. Ii desu yo. Tanoshikatta desu. Ah, boku mo nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? Ja, arigato gozaimasu. So let's go ahead and go over the English for that. Ojama shimashita. Okay, so. This is a set phrase in Japanese, and it sort of means, thanks for having me. The literal translation is, I intruded on you, or I was, I was in your way, something like that. Um, the first time we use this sentence is when you're going into someone's house, someone else's house. When you get into their entryway, you'll say the phrase, ojama shimas. You will always say this. I, I still say it when I go to anyone's house, any, any house that isn't mine. Even when you go into it, like when students come into the office, well, they might say shitsureishimasu when they come into an office, but still, ojamashimasu, it means I'm about to intrude on you. It's a set phrase. And when you leave someone's house, you'll often say, ojamashimashita, I intruded on you. But it doesn't literally mean that. It just means, like, it's more like thanks for having me. So don't worry about that too much. But uh, yeah, it's a very important set phrase. You're going to use it if you're ever in Japan and visit anyone. So it's a good one to learn. Hi, mata ne. Hi, no problem, basically. Mata ne, see you. Ah, B san. And just outside the door, B san was there. Was she listening? I don't know. Konnichiwa. Hello. Kino arigato. Thank you for yesterday. I desu yo. It's fine. Tanoshikatta desu. I enjoyed it. Ah, oh. Boku mo, me too. Nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? Shall I carry your stuff? So she must be carrying. Now I put stuff, nimotsu as stuff. Nimotsu technically means luggage, but it can also just mean if someone has various bags or something. It can just be their things or their stuff. So, nimotsu wo mochimashou ka? Shall I carry your stuff? Ja, well then. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you very much. That She's basically saying yes, please. <clears throat> And that's it. We're on to question time. So first, we're going to, well, no, let's go ahead over question time. I want you to tell me to say or do something nicely. So with kudasai, for example, boom wo itte kudasai. Please say boom. And I will say boom, for example, while I go ahead and take a look at your questions. That was a pretty fast one tonight. Well, I guess not. Hour 40 minutes. Wasn't too bad. I feel like the cut will be fairly short. The way Genki introduces it is kind of like, that's why. Uh, yeah, it is kind of like that. I agree. And <clears throat> once again, it's not, it's not like it's wrong. And it's not like you will never use it. It's just, it's lesson six of a beginner textbook. You'd think they'd teach you something more useful, which is the katakan, you know, conjunction. You're going to use that all the time. Is it fair to say that kata is normal? Okay, we already went over that. Oh, you meant just place? Yeah. Okay. Patrick, yep. Suika is watermelon, right? Yes. Yeah, that makes way more sense for English learners. Okay, we were already there. Fun fact, my teacher is one of the authors of the book. No way. That's pretty cool. Don't tell them I'm talking bad about them sometimes. Or you can. <laughs> Actually, yeah, tell them how bad I think that section was, and I hope they didn't write it. They need to fix it. Have them contact me. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer, that makes sense. Kata at the end is like, that's why. Yeah, thanks. I agree. It is. But once again, we just don't use that much. Patrick, yes. Suika this. Suika. Hope that cough is not a symptom of you know what. Take care of yourself, Andy. <clears throat> I hope so too. But I don't think so. It's just, 
I've had this weird feeling in my throat all day. And I've had it before. <clears throat> it's a little weird. I don't know. Anyway. Or sorry to bother you. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Jama. Second kanji is which? Evil spirit. Omoshiroi. First kanji is the evil and then like uh, illusion. Ah, uh, yeah. First kanji is like evil or illusion, says Yuki. So evil or illusion. Not illusion. Like evil spirit. Like <clears throat> mm. Another way that that word is often used is um, when someone is in the way. Especially kids. You hear parents say this to kids a lot. Jamada or jamada. It means you're in the way, basically, or get out of the way, or you're blocking traffic or something. <laughs> jamada. It's kind of rude, but you hear it quite a bit. Bro, this is long as this stream? Nah, usually they're like two and a half hours. Sorry, Yuki, I worry a lot. <clears throat> no worries. Odote kudasai. Oh, God. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, I'm supposed to sing that song, aren't I? I gotta sing along with that song. Hana o tabete kudasai. LOL. Hana o tabete. Do we have any flowers? Eh, sono hana te, your nose, Janai. Hana o. Tabete kudasai. Tabeta. Uta o, uta o tatte kudasai. Okay, that's the one I have to do. Uta o tatte kudasai. Avocado o agete kudasai. He wants an avocado. Be right there. Yuki's grabbing an avocado for you, Patrick, while I get ready to sing a song. Today we learn the Japanese for talking smack about Genki. <laughs> Genki no waruguchi. Talking smack about Genki. Genki no waruguchi o yutteru. Here is an avocado for you. Look at this beautiful thing. It's massive. Kodawari avocado. Tsuruya keiyaku. Nan Anyway, there's your avocado. All right, Tei san o utatte kudasai. That's the one I lied about leaving. I ended up lurking while getting ready for the day. Well, thank you, Radclaw. Oh, yeah, I forgot you said goodbye. Welcome back. Jamada! I first learned that from Genki. Uh, you no, ate your Goku, nose. Ah, uh, Goku. Uh, Goku. I learned that from Goku. Ah, yeah, yeah. Jamada! Kamehameha! You ate your nose. Don't worry, Andy. I meant to say she was my teacher in college. I won't tell her. You should tell her. Wow, does she? All right, let's see if I can get this going. My nose is so itchy. Uh, YouTube, YouTube. Go. Where is my? I gotta turn English on. YouTube. Okay. Oh, there's my stream. Thirty-eight people are watching. Wow. Thank you guys. You're all the best. Okay, let's drag this down here. Pause back up. I've never even tried to sing this, so this is going to be embarrassing. But that's fine. I don't mind being embarrassed. I couldn't live stream on YouTube if I didn't mind being embarrassed. Stop getting bigger on me. I'm dragging this over from my 2K monitor onto my little laptop screen. Whatever. That's fine. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> so... That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for destroying your ears with that. <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> yeah. I've never listened to that song before, so I have... I have an excuse for why that was terrible. <laughs> anyway, let's see what we had here. Patreon o mite kudasai, says Dan. Yes, please, Patreon o mite kudasai. And thank you to all my patrons who are here tonight. I appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. I waited for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tabemono, tabete kudasai. 
I don't have any tabemono. I'll drink my tansan sui instead. Ah, here we go. No. Ano, thumbs up. Bo, kogeki shite kudasai. Thumbs up te nani? Thumbs up. Kono thumbs up? Kogeki shite kudasai. Kore? Ah, kogeki kore? Kore? Kogeki o. それ? あ、その like button を押してくださいっていう意味。そうか。なるほどね。Yes, please hit the like button. Thank you. My battery is dying over here. I can't believe it. I have a, I've got to switch my battery out of my camera, guys. Hold on one second. Yuki's shocked that I didn't understand the、uh, thumbs up を攻撃してっていうこと。She's completely in shock. I'm not. I've actually never heard that, that said. So, thank you for teaching me something tonight. This Tay song is really helpful. Just love it. I'm going to have to do an actual version of it where I actually, I actually try. <laughs> I want to make a metal version of the Tay song. Oh my God! You should totally do that. Encore! <laughs> In case anyone needs it, do verb. Do becomes te. Yes, u verb. Nice, thank you. And also. Oh, yeah, Iku is. It can be considered an irregular one for this one. Could you please send the link to that song? What was its name? It's the Te Form song.、Um, I think I put it, well, it's way up in chat, so you'll never find it. So let me just get a copy of it right now. There's a couple versions of it. I think it's Hatsune Miku, ne?、Oh, it's made by.、Miku. Right. I will. I'm going to make a version of this. I'm definitely going to make a version of this. Mm. But that's just a random channel that uploaded a version of the song that already existed. It's not actually her channel. The, I mean, that, that thing's channel. Pew pew, oh, eat they could aside. Pew pew, pew pew pew. There you go. <laughs> Now sing the hiragana song. Is there a hiragana song? Oh my god. Kami o tabete k u d a s a i No, I refuse to do that. <laughs> Look, it's my favorite vocaloid, Andy. <laughs> Please attack the thumbs up button.、Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it easy to buy avocados in Japan? I don't think I've even seen any when I visited Japan. Yeah, they're all over the place. Well, they're in every supermarket I've been to. They're not, they're not cheap, but I guess they're not that expensive. These ones that we've been buying, they're huge. They're delicious. And they're, they're about $1.50 USD, probably. So 179 yen. Usually when they're on sale, they can go as low as like 120 yen, maybe a little bit less. But they're, they're, they're large. Like my head is huge. Please be, my, my head. Is very big. I do not have a small head. And、uh, that's, that's the avocado. So, anyway. Thank you, Jules. <laughs> is it safe to say that we have to master Tay form before proceeding?、Uh, you don't have to master it. I mean, you're not going to master it in two weeks. You're not going to master it until you're giving it some, a decent amount of use, until you've used it quite a bit. But you need to become familiar with it because the next lesson is the te iru form, which is the present continuous. So it will be very helpful、Yay. if you do、um, use it. If you do get used to it, at least. 89 cents, that must be nice. Awesome. So, I'm just going to bring this up right now. This is いいねを押してください I definitely like thumbs up. Oh, 攻撃してください That's a way better way of saying hit the thumbs up button, please. Thumbs up. Oh, 攻撃してください And channel 登録をお願いします Channel 登録お願いします That means please subscribe if you haven't already. I think most of you guys are. So, thank you so much. Also, Please check out the Patreon if you haven't gotten to check it out. Thank you to all my Patreons who are here tonight. There's lots of you. 103, I think, right now. That's just so cool. Thank you so much. I、uh, do listening and shadowing videos in here based on the dialogue in here and within Genki. We do all of the textbook practice together with you in videos on there. And we also cover the vocabulary and go into a little bit more detail on some of them that need more details covered on them. And we go over, we have you repeat and shadow the vocabulary along with Yuki's native pronunciation and stuff like that over there. There's also the stream cuts of these live streams are released early there. I usually finish the cut by Tuesday and have it up there. I release them to everybody 
on Sunday during the question and answer stream. So just so you're aware of that, that's what's on the Patreon. So thank you. Uh, if you check that out, thank you for the streams is yes. And thank you for coming. That's where Omae wa mo shindeiru came from. That is exactly where that came from. That's exactly true. Thanks again for this week's lesson, says Raf. My friend from Hawaii grows avocados in her yard. What? That would be awesome. Arigato, Andy. Thank you. Arigato, Stadirisu. Arigato, Patrick. Arigato, Jennifer. Is Lesson 7 going to be in two weeks' time? Yes. Lesson 7 will be in two weeks' time. In one week, we're going to have Lesson 6 question and answer stream. And then, and also releasing the cut of this. And in two weeks, will be Lesson 7. So yeah, good times. So thank you so much, everyone. Maybe next time I'll sing the Hiragana song. Maybe sometime soon I will make a Te Form song. Yuki has something she wants to say. Kore yonda. Kore yonda. The Te Form is essentially the door to all other doors. Yes, it's the door to many other doors. Many, many grammar points in, ja points in Japanese. Super useful points. Teikuru. Teiku. Teiru. Tekureru. And all the te's that we covered tonight. Like, there's just so many different grammar points that are just so useful that use the te form that this, yeah, it's going to open some doors for you when you learn this. It's very important to learn. And also, it's exactly the same as the informal past form conjugation. So that's great. All right. Looking forward to lesson seven. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it too. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and play. The thank you video for all my patrons and uh, and run the ad roll. So thank you guys. Have a great night. Have a great week. Oh, I'm gonna run it. I'll run it. And yes, thank you. Oh, by the way, I thought I should mention that next month in July, all the patrons and all the new patrons are gonna be getting a special Ando Span themed pin that Yuki's gonna be making with Mizuhiki, which is basically a Japanese type of art. These pins, there's a special Ando-san themed pin. That's a promotion coming up in July, so keep an eye out for that. Have a great night, guys. Thank you for being here. As always, this has been Tokini Andy. Thank you. と同じ風に日本語を喋れるようになりたいのか。この本持ってるのか。でも、we're Detailed grammar lessons and Japanese Q and A's will, as always, be on the YouTube for free. Tokini Andy Patreon live right now. Yoroshiku ne. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. My mic was off. Thank you again, everyone. Have a good night or a good day. Goodbye.